Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and we continue in depth once again. This time with the Thousand Suns Codex and we are focusing on the Elite Choice, that is the Scarab Occult Terminators. And with these in-depth series what I do is break down each of the units and have a look inside the uh, data slate. Are they any good on their own or if we can make them a bit better with some stratagems, some psychic powers and anything else that I can think of that will make a, a unit into something more than its individual component. So let's get straight into the video. So then here we go then guys, the uh, Scarab Occult Terminators are an elite choice for the Thousand Suns. Uh, what you get for your money then, a power level of 11 to start with, gets you one Scarab Occult Sorcerer and four Scarab Occult Terminators. And you can include an additional five uh, Terminators for an additional plus 11, so a total of 22 power level. Each uh, Terminator is armed with an Inferno Combi Bolter and a Power Sword, and the Sorcerer comes with an Inferno Combi Bolter and a Force Stave. They're pretty slow, so let's go through some of the stats. The regular Terminators have a move of 4 inches, a weapon skill of 3+, plus, ballistic skill of 3+, plus, a strength and toughness of 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, a leadership of 8, and a save of 2+. Plus. The Sorcerer that comes with them has a move of 5 inches, and a weapon skill and ballistic skill of 3+, plus, a strength and uh, toughness of 4+, plus, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, and a leadership of 9, with a save of 2+. Plus. So if you are reading straight from your codex at the moment, that unit comes in at 204 points. However, thanks to chapter approved, we've got some points reductions. And those points reductions were on the base cost of the model. So originally when these, uh, these units came out in the codex, they were 33 points each. They've been reduced to 30 points. So in effect, you're now paying 15 points less than 204. And what that really does is basically give your Inferno Combi Bolters for free. So the unit stock now comes in at 189 points, which is a bit of an odd number. There are a number of war gear options for this unit. So for example, the Scarab Occult Sorcerer can replace his Inferno Combi Bolter with a Power Sword. One Scarab Occult Terminator can replace his Combi Bolter with a Heavy Warp Flamer or a Soul Reaper Cannon. And if the unit contains 10 models, a second Scarab Occult Terminator can also do the same. So you can get two heavy weapons in a unit of 10. One Scarab Occult Terminator can take a Hellfire Missile Rack and again, if your unit numbers 10 models, a second uh, Terminator can do the same. So that's in addition to your, uh, your Combi Bolter in this case. You're not replacing it with a heavy weapon. These are like shoulder, shoulder rack mounted weapons. But we'll cover a bit more on the weapons shortly. Let's continue with the data slate. Abilities then, Death to the False Emperor, which basically means any hit rolls of a 6 against an Imperium keyworded unit, you get an uh, additional attack. Uh, all is Dust. Same as the Rubric Marines, if you've uh, seen my Rubric Marine in depth. All is Dust adds one to the saving throw for the Scarab Occult Terminators if the attack has a damage characteristic of one. In addition, the minus one modifier to hit rolls for moving and shooting with heavy weapons does not apply. Very handy for the Soul Reaper Cannon. Being Terminators, they come with Terminator Armor, which gives them a 5 plus invulnerable save on top of their 2 plus armor save. They also have Teleport Strike as befitting all Terminators, so during deployment you can set the unit up in a Teleportarium Chamber instead of placing them on the battlefield, and at the end of a movement phase you can deploy these uh, on the battlefield anywhere more than 9 inches away from the enemy model. And remember, due to the uh, changes in the rules, that has to be from turn 2 onwards. Now the Sorcerer is a Psyker and can attempt to manifest one Psychic Power in each friendly Psychic phase, and attempt to deny one Psychic Power in each enemy Psychic phase. Being a Psyker, he knows Smite and one Psychic Power from the Discipline of Change. But when the Scarab Cult Sorcerer manifests Smite, it's only a baby Smite, so it's one Mortal Wound instead of D3, and D3 Mortal Wounds instead of D6, if your Psychic Test is more than 10. So finally, let's cover the Faction Keywords. They are Chaos, Zinch, Heretic Astartes and Thousand Suns, and their regular keywords, Infantry, Terminator, Psyker, and Scarab Occult Terminators. Let's talk about their base weapons then. So the Inferno Combi Bolter, range of 24, rapid fire 2, strength 4, AP minus 2, and 1 damage. The Force Stave on the Sorcerer is a melee weapon, plus 2 strength, so strength 6, AP minus 1, and D3 damage. And the Power Sword on everybody else, again, melee only, strength as user, so strength 4, AP minus 3, and 1 damage. The first upgrade I want to talk about then is the Soul Reaper Cannon, uh, as shown in the picture above. 
The Soul Reaper Cannon uh, is a range of 24, it's heavy 4, strength 5, AP minus 3, and 1 damage. Uh, I don't actually have a guy with a heavy warp flamer, and we'll get on to the reasons why shortly. The second weapon option then is the Hellfire Missile Rack, as shown in the picture. This is a range of 24, heavy 2, strength 8, AP minus 2, and does D3 damage. Both the Soul Reaper and the Hellfire Rack are 15 points each, so that, make sure you add that to your tally of your unit. Now the reason I don't take the Warp Flamer is I always find that that never ever gets into range and it just seems a bit of a wasted uh, effort for me. So this is my preferred method of running them then. This is with a unit of five with a single Soul Reaper and a single Hellfire Rack and then leave the Sorcerer with his Force Stave rather than changing it to a Power Sword. Uh, for me, I think this is a very good combination. And although I could add another five Terminators to get the second Hellfire Rack and the second Soul Reaper, I'd rather run two units of five for the same price, but gain an extra Psyker. Okay, well, technically it's an extra eight points because you've got to pay for a Force Stave again. But for me, uh, two units of five, I think, is much more flexible than a single unit of ten uh, for a number of different reasons. So objectively speaking, you might want to deploy them separate. Um, and they also take up quite a little bit of, uh, of space on your board. It just gives you that bit more flexibility without having to, to compromise a, a single unit. You've got two units. And, and with two wounds each, that's a still te a 10 wound unit that's still pretty tough with a 2 plus save and a 5 plus invulnerable save. So for me, that's pretty good. So that's how I tend to run mine. And for that extra 8 points for that second force save that, that makes the difference between running 10 man or 2 5 man is you now get that extra psychic power. So you can either double smite, even though it is a baby smite, or you can use some alternative powers that we'll discuss in a second. So as you've heard then, these guys are pretty mean. Those uh, Inferno Combi Bolters are really what make the Scarab Occult Terminators what they are. And the Soul Reaper Cannon... Okay, they're all 24 inch range, they're all sort of mid-range weapons, but that AP-2 and AP-3 is something that many armies do not get on models of this calibre. Okay, they might be paying a few points less, but you know what? AP-2 and AP-3 against tough infantry or enemy models is absolutely huge in this game. A difference between a 2 plus save to a 4 plus, or a 3 plus to a 5 plus if you're facing enemy terminators or enemy heavy infantry that come with that stock 3 plus save. Minus two and minus three is absolutely massive. These guys also benefit from the new Bolter Discipline and Beta rules. Uh, I'll put that up on the screen in a second for you if you're not familiar with it. But basically the Rapid Fire 2 Inferno Combi Bolters used to get four shots if you were within 12 inches of the enemy. Now you basically you don't need to worry about it. You've now got four shots consistently at a range of 24. So when you used to consider your deep strike options, you used to be nine inches away from the enemy, but you wanted to be under 12 so that you could get those extra shots. Now you've got a little bit more flexibility. Your damage or your your danger bubble where you land is uh, is less, less of a concern. You can actually drop within 24 and still have that same threat. Okay, you might forego the opportunity to potentially charge, but your, your ranged weapon damage output is now at its maximum all the time. Now with the uh, addition of Split Fire that came into 8th edition, having those Hellfire Racks on the Soul Reaper Cannon really, big, really did make a difference to me in this unit. You're now able to fire that Hellfire Rack at something a little bit higher toughness, so a vehicle for example, and put out a potential 6 damage into those, uh, into those units. And the Soul Reaper Cannon again, really good for facing against Toughness 5 or Toughness 6 kind of, uh, kind of stuff with that Strength 5 AP-3 Heavy 4 shots. And we'll talk about some of the buffs to this unit uh, in the uh, in the next section, just to sort of how can we make these units just that little bit more effective. So how do we make an already pretty scary sounding unit even more scary? So we talk stratagems next. So the first one of note is Veterans of the Long War, one of the best stratagems in the Chaos Codex for one command point. Use this stratagem when a Thousand Suns infantry unit, which these guys are, uh, and select and they are selected to attack in the shooting off or fight phase, add one to all wound rolls made for that unit until the end of the phase. So it doesn't last until the end of the turn, so you do have to pick and choose when you use this. But basically you're adding one to those wound rolls. Now, these guys are strength 4 and strength 5 typically, when they open fire with those uh, horrifically good uh, Inferno bolt guns. But if you want to maximise the output of those, Veterans of the Long War is definitely a highly recommended strategy on these guys. Basically, you're wounding Toughness 4 on 3s now, and Toughness 5 on 4s. That 
that difference in the roll when you've got the AP minus two modifiers is absolutely brutal and I would highly recommend it. The second stratagem that could benefit these guys, uh, it's very situational though, is Soul Flare for one command point. Basically when your Thousand Suns Aspiring Sorcerer or Scarab Occult Sorcerer from your army is slain, before removing that model as a casualty, roll a d6 for every enemy unit within six inches of that model, subtracting two from the roll if the unit being rolled for is a character or vehicle. On a four plus, the unit being rolled for suffers a mortal wound. That could be pretty tasty. Basically, it's on a six for a character or a vehicle, but a four for infantry or uh, or non-character, non-vehicle stuff. But very situational. If you're really bogged down in that combat, that could could work out in your favour if there's multiple units there. But something that hasn't really come up for me when I've used my uh, my models in a game. So where we make the biggest impact on our Thousand Suns Scarab Occult Terminators is in the Psychic phase. Now your Psyker comes with the Discipline of Change. Now usually you're probably going to end up smiting with him, even though it is only one mortal wound. However, there are some very good options, but you may want to be running these on other characters though. The first one to call out is Glamour of Zinch. Uh, it's a Psychic uh, Warp Charge value of 7, and if manifested, your friendly Thousand Suns unit within 12 of that Psyker is minus 1 to hit. This can make this unit, which are going to be pretty uh, high on a target priority list for your opponent, just makes it that little bit more resilient because they're now minus 1 to hit the target this unit. Additionally, you have Weaver of Fates, Warp Charge of 6, and if manifested, that Thousand Suns unit, i.e. your Scarab Occult Terminators here, Till the start of the next psychic phase, the invulnerable save is improved by one, so you get a four plus invulnerable save. Being a multi wound unit, temporal manipulation could come into play here. A warp charge of six, if manifested, the model, uh, model in that unit immediately heals d3 wounds. You're only really ever going to get one wound back out of that. So, again, very situational, probably something I'm not going to consider taking. The other one is Doom Bolt. Warp charge of 9, if manifested, select an enemy unit within 18 inches, which is 24 for Thousand Suns because of uh, Brotherhood of Psychers. The Psyker is visible to him, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds, and in the following movement phase must half their move characteristic and cannot advance. I would probably consider that one a quite a good option within these guys as their second known power. Weaver and Glamour I tend to prefer on other characters, uh, that have got potentially buffs on their ability to cast powers. Doombolt is quite a high one to try and cast, but for me, you're more likely uh, casting Glamour and Weaver on other units. So, Doombolt's probably not a bad shout, but that's the reason I end up uh, mainly smiting with these uh, with the sorcerers from the Scarab Occult. However, for a warp charge of seven, Zinch's Firestorm is a pretty good option as well. That's an average set of dice to get that one off. Uh, but this time you're rolling nine dice, and every six that you uh, you get on that, any enemy unit within 24 inches of that psyker and visible to him will suffer a mortal wound. That's not that's not a bad one. That can compensate potentially for a low-valued smite. I would probably, if I'm running two units of Scarab Occult, Zinch's Firestorm on one and Doombolt on the other is probably where I'd be heading to. But as I said earlier, baby smite with the option of a D3 smite isn't to be sniffed that, and especially when they're only a warp charge of five, it's a little bit more guaranteed to pretty much get off that one damage every time. However, Dark Hereticus Discipline is always good. Okay, your sorcerers in here can't have access to that, but your other characters like Magnus or your Exalted Sorcerers can. And there's some powers in here that can really buff these guys. Prescience is always king. Uh, warp charge of seven, if manifested, this unit can add one to hit rolls. Now, if you combine that with Veterans of the Long War, you're now hitting on twos and wounding on a, an additional dice, or a plus one to your dice. That can really make your uh, your Inferno Combi Bolters very, very good indeed. Uh, but Prescience, you know, depending on the build of your army, Prescience has a lot of valuable targets that you want to put it on. So you have to be very selective where you're going to apply Prescience. But a unit of Terminators isn't a bad shout, especially now they've got Bolter Discipline and they've got that extra range for those extra shots. A single unit here with four uh, combi bolters is putting out a lot of pain, and if you can hit on twos, that's pain multiplied. Another handy one, as always, is warp time. These guys are pretty slow, um, but if you can get a warp charge of six from another Psyker and pick a unit of Heret Heretic Astartes, which these guys are within three, which is actually nine, that unit can then immediately move as if it's the movement phase again. Um, Again, very, very situational, and a move of four inches now doubled to eight. 
are these necessarily the right choice for that you really want to be warp charging something or warp timing something that is exceptionally quick like magnus or like a hell drake or something weird and wonderful like that where you really want to sling that model as far forward as possible and get it into combat another good target for warp time is a demon prince that is uh, super buffed up ready for combat so something like this again very situational just depending on how your game's flowing i recently played a game where i did warp time these guys it was very situational and it actually helped me out quite uh, quite a lot so again very situational but it's something to bear in mind that it's a good one to get off on these guys if you really are struggling for mobility, these guys can ride in a Land Raider. Uh, for me though, Land Raiders, how many do you see in 8th edition at the moment? Not very many. Even with the points reduction for those things, they are a huge fire magnet that doesn't really get its points back these days. And bear in mind that, you know, you can hold these back for a turn and keep them in Deep Strike. And that kind of protects them probably more than a uh, vehicle that's just going to get shot to pieces and then you'll roll a 1 as you bail out and die anyway. So ignore vehicles for these guys is my opinion. So finally let's cover some weaknesses then. Um, they suffer the same weaknesses as every other Terminator in the game. That 2 plus save these days isn't that great. There's so much stuff that puts out AP minus 1, AP minus 2. If you can get them down to that bare 5 plus invulnerable save, they will start shedding wounds. And they are such a small unit that every single one that is killed really does take its toll on these guys and of course getting mortal wounds into these guys just negates all saves anyway. As with anything that has two wounds if you've got a damage to a weapon you're going to ignore the all is dust rule which means that your things like your auto cannons are really going to make a mess of things like this. Damage two removes a single model at a time which is very good uh, and but more importantly gets through that all is dust. All is dust is very good for these guys right so they have a net zero plus save in cover. Plus one for all his dust, puts them on a one plus save pretty much all the time against one damage. Put them in cover, they're on a zero plus. So you really want to make sure they're out of cover if you can find them out of cover. And then shoot them with damage to stuff to ignore all of their, uh, their ingrained abilities. So the big question is, are they really worth taking in a Thousand Suns army? For me... I think there are better options in the game at the moment, in the codex at the moment, even with the points reductions. However, they are very, very nice models. I do like to use them. They're very thematic. Everyone likes a marine army with Terminators in. If you're playing competitively, they're probably not your best option. If you're playing for fun and you've got the points to spare, if you're playing around about the sort of the 2,000 point game, I'd not be afraid to put a unit of these in, or maybe even two. In my recent battle report, I actually fielded two of these just to see these... Uh, Bolter Discipline and Beta Rules come into play. Um, and they were actually very, very good. They shrugged off an awful lot of damage. They kept going. Uh, one unit was still pretty much going at the end of the game, I believe. Um, but for you out there watching this video, debatable whether they're still worth it. 189 points for that unit of five with the Hellfire and the Soul Reaper. It is an expensive unit because for just a few more points, you can get a whole unit of 10 Rubrics. Um, and for not very much more than that, you can get like 30s angles. And 30s angles is pretty, pretty nasty. I think they're just over, what are they, 7 points each for th times 30? Yeah, that's not many more than it costs you for a unit of Terminators. So, yeah, again, debatable, but very thematic. They are cool models to paint. Let's not, let's not knock the fact that these are gorgeous models to paint. So, competitive, no, friendly and fun. Over and above the 1750 mark, absolutely. There we go then guys, that is the breakdown of the Scarab Occult Terminators. I'd like to know in the comments section below what you think of this unit post chapter approved with the points drop and the new Abolter Discipline that really affects these guys. Love to hear from you in the comments whether you're now rocking the Scarab Occult or whether you think they're still overpriced and nobody's going to use them. But either way, I hope you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I shall catch you guys on the next video.